Fall 1993, we arrive in D.C., my wife and I, Cornelia, and two lovely kids, and I'm the senior national affairs reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Job you gotta kill people to get, and I killed 10 guys to get the job. Fabulous job. The moment I arrive, we find out our son, uh, our little guy, uh, is autistic. He vanishes on us. We, we have no way to talk to him, uh, and it crushes us. When we first heard the word autism, we were stunned. Uh, I said, you mean like Rain Man, like Dustin Hoffman in that movie? And the doctor says, well, maybe, but you know, he speaks, and some of them never get their speech back. And that's the last thing I heard in that appointment. That can't be my son. It was. And our education was about to begin. There's no way to talk to him. He can't even make his needs known. We just watch him. And then all of a sudden it dawns on us. <laughs> What's he doing? He's doing what we all do. Story. He's watching the Disney animated movies. All the ones you know. Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, Dumbo, Peter Pan. He can't really communicate. But all of a sudden, at a moment, it dawns on us. He's making sense of the world using these movies, just like we all do, as a mirror, as a map, as a vessel. That's what we do with story. We start playing out scenes, night after night. We call them the basement sessions. We all play characters. First one, I'm Baloo, then I'm Merlin, then I'm Mufasa. He learns to read by reading credits. He emerges as a unique autistic individual. At that point, I'm interviewing presidents. You know, but the fact of the matter is, What's happening in the basement as we meditate in the emergence of the hero, that's the stuff that's most meaningful in our life. We realize he's memorized these movies, 50 Disney animated movies since Snow White. I go up to the room, how do I find a way back in? I grab a puppet, a puppet I know he loves, Iago, the evil psychic to the villain Jafar in Aladdin. You know this character, Gilbert Gottfried. Anyone can do his voice, it's like a busted Cuisinart. Owen, oh, Owen, oh, how does it feel to be you? He turns to the puppet like he's bumping into an old friend. He says, not good, I'm lonely and I have no friends. And we talk. Two, three minutes, it's Yago and Owen. Back and forth, and then I hear him clear his throat. <clears throat> and then he says, I love the way your foul little mind works. That's Jafar. We begin to live inside of story. We live inside of characters, as our son Owen says, and now those characters live in us. The key question, who decides what the meaningful life is? We saw the way the world looked at our son. They looked at him long enough to look away. Who decides what the meaningful life is? Is that a decision someone else makes for us? Some values, some received wisdom, some cultural decision making happening from on high? Well, clearly they made a decision about him. Who decides what the meaningful life is? I'm Ron Suskind, and this is my brief but spectacular take on finding everybody's story. <laughs>